Hello everyone, this is James and welcome to Lectures. In this episode, I will be discussing about the beta-adrenergic drugs. So these drugs either enhances the uh, simulation of uh, beta receptors, we call them the agonists, or it blocks or antagonizes, we call them the antagonist, beta blockers. So beta agonist and beta antagonist. So beta receptors, B1 is found in the heart, specifically in the conduction system, in the sinoatrial node, and EV node, and in the ventricular muscles. So B1 increases heart rate. B1 is also found in the kidneys, in the juxta glomerular cells. It stimulates the um, release of renin and start the whole renin angiotensin aldosterone system. B1 in the kidneys increases blood pressure. B2, B2 are found in the lungs, in the smooth muscles of the GI tract, in your uterus, I don't have a uterus, in the bladder. Okay? So all it does is just open up, relaxes the smooth muscles in the lungs, so bronchodilation. In the, um, in the GI tract, it decreases GI motility. In the bladder, it relaxes the bladder wall to allow urine to come in. Okay? And we also have beta-2 receptors in the pancreas and in the liver. In the pancreas, that simulates the release of insulin and glucagon. And in the liver, it will do the hepatic production responsible for the hepatic production of glucose through glycogenolysis or the conversion of glycogen into glucose or uh, gluconeogenesis, the conversion of non-carbs into glucose and that includes your fats and proteins, okay, sugar production. And we also have, these are the two major uh, beta receptors, B1 and B2, I call them banana 1 and banana 2, but we also have B3 in the adipose tissues and in the bladder also in the detrusor muscles of the bladder. So in the, in the adipose tissue, tissue, it is responsible for lipolysis or just a fancy term for fat burning. That's your beta-3. Okay. So I will give a scenario. Okay. For instance, you see a dragon. So we call this dragon puff. Okay. Puff, the magic dragon. And this dragon lives by the sea, and he prolics in the autumn mist in a land called Hanali. Little Jackie Paper. So you see Puff the Magic Dragon, and you are frightened, and you run. And that is your sympathetic nervous system. Your fight and flight response. Your fight and flight response. So what happens? You run away. So what happens when you run? Heart rate goes up. Blood pressure goes up. What happened to your lungs? Open up, more air can go in, so you can run. What happened to your bladder? Bladder will relax, so you will not pee. Can you pee when you run? Yes, if you have a superpower. No, you cannot pee when you run. You only pee when you stop running, and that's when you pee, because that is your para, not your simpa. Simpa relaxes the, the bladder uh, wall. And then, how about your GI tract? Do you digest when you run? No. Can you eat when you run? Yes, if you have a superpower. No, you cannot eat when you run. You cannot digest when you run. So that's why when you run, your GI uh, smooth muscles will not contract, will relax. So you can run. And then how about in the pancreas and the liver? So we know that beta-2 is um, responsible for insulin and glucagon release and also the hepatic production of your blood sugar. So now you have blood sugar, and then you also have insulin because insulin will be secreted dependent on the blood glucose. You have the blood glucose, you have the insulin. Then the insulin will tell your skeletal muscles, the insulin will tell your fat cells, the, the insulin will tell all other cells in your body to open up so glucose can come in and you can use glucose for energy. Because you only have a certain amount of glucose to stay in your blood. Milligrams per DL. The rest should be in your cells to be used as your energy. Because if it stays in your blood, you are not using it. You are not using it for energy. It's just staying there in your blood. So that's why you are diabetic. Now let's talk about the beta-adrenergic 
agonist. So these drugs mimics or enhances the effects of beta stimulation. And the number one is your epinephrine. Okay? Epinephrine acts on B1 and B2 and indicated for cardiac arrest. So your staying alive moment, think about epinephrine. And it also indicated for anaphylactic shock. Like if you eat nuts and you become nuts, so you need your epinephrine. And it's also indicated for um, cardiogenic shock. So cardiogenic shock, anaphylactic shock, and your cardiac arrest. That's your epinephrine acts on um, B1 and B2. And then we have our, we have uh, the medicine called isoproterenol or your isoprenaline. So this also is non-selective. They act on B1 and B2. And it is indicated for bradycardia or AV black. Bradycardia or AV black. And this condition called Adam-Stokes. So Adam-Stokes Adam syndrome, this is the fainting spells or a brief lo loss of consciousness due to a large drop of cardiac output related to changes in the heart rate. So your, your, heart, rate, your heart rate went down, you are bradycardic and you fell on your knees and you hear the angel voices, after all, it's not a holy night. Just kidding. So Adam Stokes syndrome, initially you will be given isoprenaline or isoproterenol, or you, you can also be given epinephrine to help, to help the B1 uh, increase heart rate, but the long-term management for Adam Stokes is pacemaker placement. Pacemaker placement. So those are our non-selective, the act on B1 and B2. Now let's go to the B1, B1 selective agonist. So they only act on B1, not on B2. Um, we have norepinephrine, okay? norepinephrine acts on B1 only, but it also has activities on alpha-1 and alpha-2. B1, alpha, and alpha-2. Norepinephrine indicated for um, severe hypotension, or septic shock. So you have a patient who is septic, you're giving fluids, and the blood pressure is refractory to the fluid resuscitation, it's time for norepinephrine. And no, we give levofed. Yeah, levofed is norepinephrine. And then we have uh, dopamine. Dopamine is also a B1 selective, but it has other functions. So it acts on your dopaminergic one, D1 receptors, and it also acts on your alpha-1 and alpha-2. That's your dopamine indicated for cardiogenic shock, decompensated heart failure, or if it acts on your D1, dopaminergic act, it can cause, it, it's also used for treatment of uh, acute renal failure because it has some vasodilation, selective vasodilation effects in the kidney allowing renal blood flow. And then we have dobutamine. Dobutamine is also a B1 selective, uh, exclusively B1 selective, uh, given for patients who are experiencing cardiogenic shock or a, a decompensated heart failure. So you give your dobutamine. And also this medication is popularly known in stress tests. Right? If you cannot do the treadmill, so they're going to give you the dobutamine stress test. And what it does is it increases your heart rate. Yeah, until you can tolerate how your heart can handle the increase of your heart rate. So that's your dubutamine stress test. So those are our beta-1 um, beta uh, agonist, beta-adrenergic agonist. Now let's go to the beta-2, beta-2 um, selective agonist. And I discussed it with my NEBS uh, lecture. It is albuterol indicated for COPD and asthma patients. And then we have B B3, which is myrabigron, my okay? my myrbertric. And this is used to treat overactive bladder, uh, urinary, frequency in, uh, urinary frequency or urinary incontinence because it relaxes the, the uh, literature muscles, allowing more, um, more urine, uh, filling in of urine, uh, overactive bladder. This is your beta-3. And then common sense side effects, common sense, tachycardia, hypertension, hyperglycemia, 
and nervousness, it can precip precipitate angina, all these agonists, um, headache, nervousness, tremors, common side effects because they're acting on your B1 and on your B2. Now let's go to our blockers, the antagonist, beta adrenergic antagonist, or we call it BB. Not gandang hari, but BB beta blockers. So there's a trick. Okay? It's in the alphabet. From letter A to letter N, A to N, N, into, N is for divibolol. So A to N, those are selective beta blockers. They only act on beta 1. Okay? Selective. Atenolol, okay? metropolol, bismolol, nivibolol. That's for N. So those are selective beta blockers. And then the non-selective is from N also to Z. And that includes your nadulol. Nadulol is non-selective. Propranolol. And your timolol. Okay? So N, nadulol to Z, that is non-selective beta blockers. They block the activities of beta 1 and beta 2. And but there are two exceptions to the rule. This is your carbidolol and um, labitolol. Because carbidolol and labitolol are non selective beta blockers, but they are also alpha 1 blockers. So carbidolol, labitolol will block, block the activities of B1, B2, and alpha 1. Okay. So what are the what are these drugs for? Okay, common sense for tachycardia, right? Because it brings down the heart rate, hypertension because it brings down uh, blood pressure. Your uh, timolol is indicated for not the first line, but indicated for hypertension when you take it in the field form. But if you have the eye drops, it's for your glaucoma or ocular hypertension that's your timolol and most of these drugs also are used for post mi now you need to take beta blockers okay so what are the the side effects common sense decreased heart rate for the cardia right? uh, hypotension and the tricky part that the non-selective beta blockers they are contraindicated for asthmatic patients because you are blocking b2 so you are constricting the bronchioles and your asthma, you cannot breathe, and you are constricting more, so you cannot breathe anymore. So it's contraindicated for uh, asthmatic patients. The non-selective, even the selective, even the selective will not act on B2, but they are related. So it's used cautiously for asthma patients too, even if you're using the non-select, the selective B1 blockers. So let's discuss the side effects of beta blockers uh, to non-diabetics and to diabetic patients. So for non-diabetics, the effects, the side effect, one of the side effects is hyperglycemia. Because remember, when you are blocking B2, especially the non-selective, if you are blocking B2, you are blocking the production, the hepatic production of sugar. And then you're blocking the release of glucagon and insulin from the pancreas. So the glucagon is released and will act on your liver, to produce sugar from converting glycogen into glucose, that's your glycogenolysis. But you are blocking that pathway. So what happens? Although there is no sugar production by the liver, there is um, uh, less uh, insulin available because you're blocking the pancreas from secreting insulin, but you are still eating, so you still have glucose in your blood but you have less insulin, so what happens? Your blood, your blood sugar goes up. So that is hyperglycemia if you are uh, taking beta blockers, the non-selective beta blockers, and you are non-diabetic. But if you are diabetic, that is the tricky part there. Because if you are diabetic, well, you're, you already have issues with your insulin. Okay? Type 1, there's a total destruction of your beta cells, not producing insulin. Type 2, you have insulin resistance, but you are blocking the pancreas from secreting glucagon and insulin. 
and you are blocking the liver from producing sugar through glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis. So what happens? You have no insulin, little insulin, you have no sugar, you are still eating though. You are still eating but you are also taking medications to lower down your blood sugar because you are diabetic. Then your liver stops producing uh, uh, glucose because you are blocking um, the hepatic production. So what? So in turn, you don't have recovery period because usually when your when your blood sugar is low, it's either because of the medications. Your liver will convert glycogen into glucose, and that would help maintain a healthy blood levels of blood glucose. But you are blocking that way the pathway, so the 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 beta blockers, the non-selective beta blockers, will exacerbate hypoglycemia. So non-diabetic hyper glycemia for diabetics hypoglycemia and then one of the important factors also why you, you you cannot if you're diabetic as much as possible don't take the beta blockers especially the non-select non-selective is contraindicated because it masks the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia because okay? so you're blocking the heart rate so you don't have tachycardia you don't have tremors anymore you don't have shakiness it's usually when your blood sugar is low, you are shaky, right? Shaky. And what you have is sweating, right? But no tremors, no tachycardia, no shakiness. So that's why you have to take caution, caution when you're taking the non, the selective uh, beta blockers. The non-selective, as much as possible, you avoid the, those medications for diabetic patients. And if you enjoyed this video, um, click the subscribe button and repetition repetition is the key is the key to learning to keep on watching these videos until it will be stored in your hippocampus our hippo hippocampus is the storage of our long-term memory so if you enjoyed this video again invite your friends and friends and friends to like and subscribe the channel and to watch the videos bye